Hey guys, it's Davin here at Brewbits.com. Behind the camera we've got James. Say hello James. So I thought we would show you a new wine kit as we're videoing this right now. Um, there used to be a brand around called Kenridge and Kenridge have had a big rebrand and it's now called Vineco and they've changed the uh, great concentration process as well so that you should get a better finished wine from your great concentrate. So here we've got the signature series of Vineco and I love a Sauvignon Blanc. Um, really zingy, fruity, but this is a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc and the grapes, uh, the grape juice has been sourced from New Zealand and it's actually made in Canada. All of this is put together in Canada. And the New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is even zingier than a Sauvignon Blanc. It really hits you at the tip of the tongue. Uh, it's got all that real beautiful fruitiness and a lovely dryness as well. And it's pretty hard to get in here because it's a heavy box and they don't want it to accidentally open up. So you're really going to need to get in here. Oh, there we go. So, in here we've got a big bag, I'll pull it forward for you, a big bag of grape concentrate, and then we've got a couple of bags here. So, this first one here, these are your Vineco Sauvignon Blanc labels. And then in here, oh, I was getting out of the way, mate. We've got all of your sachets of ingredients that you're going to need to brew this kit up. So we've got bentonite, and that's a clay that actually sucks up um, any excess pectin, so it means we're going to get a lovely clear one at the end. Sulfate sorbate, um, so that's going to be used as a stabilizer. We've got a kisel sol and a chitosan. This is our finings. And then we've got uh, two yeasts. Um, we've got a Lauvin V1116, which is a normal white wine, all purpose plus white wine yeast, and an EC1118, which is a champagne yeast. And then, of course, we've got our instructions. And again, one side, we've got our English instructions. And then the other, we've got our French instructions. And again, over this side, it details of what equipment you're gonna to need to be able to brew it up. And then over here, you've got your steps and your days. A Couple of other things though, when following this kit, back to me, James, is that although they have set it out in two days, you also need to check this with a hydrometer. So you don't move on to the next step, even though you might have reached that number of days, if your hydrometer reading isn't as they're suggesting. And then lastly, we've got this big, beautiful bag. And I'll slide it out for you. This is a big, beautiful bag of great concentrate. Now down here, James, come on in down here, and you'll see there's some sediment. That's, uh, you see as I'm moving it about. So we give that good old rub, get that back into the wine. We want that in there. That's all part of the flavor. That's all part of our tannins. So in a mo, I'm gonna get this back in the box because it's gonna make life a bit easier getting in. And this cap here is one of the things we're gonna need to take off. And I'll show you how to take that off a bit later. So that is everything that's in the box of the new, as it is right now, um, Vine Co. New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc White Wine Kit. So, now we've got all this, I'm gonna put this back in the box, and then I'll show you what equipment you're gonna to need to brew it up. To brew up our Vine Co. New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, we're gonna do a few bits. So, the first thing we've got here is a bucket, and I've already sterilized this ready to go, and inside I've got my long plastic spoon as well. We're also going to need a carboy, um, that's got our bung and our airlock. We're going to need a hydrometer so that we can check to see if the wine's at the right stages before we add the next chemical or move on to the next step. Um, we're going to need a thermometer as well so we can make sure that we're at the right temperature when we're moving on. 
we're going to need some cleaner and sterilizer so that we can sterilize everything and make sure we can get it as clean as possible to get the best wine possible. Um, our hydrometer will nicely fit into our trial jar and then we're going to need a siphon to siphon everything from like the bucket to the um, carboy and then from the carboy to our bottles and so we're going to need some bottles. We're going to need 30 wine bottles and therefore we're going to need some corks, some good quality corks and then we're going to need a corker and in this case I've just grabbed the hand corker out of the drawer but any corker will do. Um, the only other thing you're going to need is obviously the wine kit and something to keep you going. So let's get brewing. The first thing we need to do is put two litres of hot tap water into our bucket. That's one and I need to put the second one in. So if you've got a combination boiler, like most of us now have in the UK, then it's absolutely fine to use hot tap water straight from the tap. But if you've got a header tank up in the roof um, that comes down and has a tank in an airing cupboard, um, I would suggest you use boiled, slightly cooled water from a kettle. Okay, so we're now going to take our sachet of bentonite and this is a clay and this clay is used in loads of different things from makeup to foods and in this case wine. And I'll show it to you. This is a, a grey looking clay, pelletised, tiny little pellets. It won't really dissolve um, but it kind of goes gooey. And this is an amazing clay. What it's gonna do is, if there's any pectin in our grape juice, it's gonna soak up the pectin. Now pectin's, uh, back to me James, pectin's absolutely fantastic in a jam because it helps jam set. But when we're making wine, if there was any pectin in the grape juice, by the time we get to our finished wine, it will be hazy. And it won't be sediment or anything like that in it, it's an actual haze. And there's no way to clear that haze. So this is what the bentonite's going to do. So we're going to get a nice, clean, crisp, clear wine at the end. So let's make sure that's all stirred in. If you've ever had a bag in box of wine or cider or anything like that, then I've prepared our vine coat box by grabbing hold of this end and putting it into a nice little slot and that's gonna help us uh, pour the wine. So, back to me, James. Because we're gonna need a knife, uh, just a normal knife that you use to eat your dinner, and we're gonna push that in just underneath. There we go, just let's go, and then pop it up. So, it's quite simple, quite easy. Once you've got the hang of it, really simple. And now we're gonna just grab all of our box and gently, incline it. So that's the majority of it out. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to take some cold tap water. One litre and we're going to gently pour this back into our bag. Now it's empty. And this is going to let us swirl it all around and get any of the grape juice concentrate that might be stuck to the sides out and into our fermenter. And just for luck, I'm going to do it again. Now guys, you might see some interesting things floating around in the wine. Uh, this is your clay and this is your bentonite. Remember I said it won't really dissolve, but it's gonna do its job. Okay, so don't be worried. That's not a bad thing to see that. So what we now need to do is we need to take our concentrate and we need to bring it up to 23 liters. So I'm just gonna add a bit more cold tap water, I think. So you can get a reading already from this. I'm trying to spin it around so we can get a good reading. 
Okay, so it's actually coming out at 1.100. So if this ferments to dryness, this should give us a wine of about 14 to 15%. Wow. On your instructions, you'll notice under step one, it's got a date and you're starting SG. So we're gonna put in today's date, which is the 15th of September, 9th, 20, and our SG, which is 1.0, nope, it was 1.100. Cool, now keep that safe. So this will help us out so that we can keep on a track of exactly how our wine is fermenting. And because we sterilized this, back in it goes. Just checking the temperature of the wine must and it's coming out at 22 degrees C. So the instructions for this kit say it can be up to 25 degrees C, but I tend to find to get the best results if you keep your wine approximately 18 to 22 degrees C, you'll get some really, really good finished results. And so the next thing we're gonna to need to do is add our yeasts. And we're gonna be adding both the yeasts. It might seem a bit strange, but yeasts do different things and they add different flavors to uh, the finished wine. And it's actually a big part of it. So, the 1116 uh, will add some uh, really interesting flavors and the 1118 will also make it slightly drier. And these both yeast will work in conjunction with each other. So we're gonna sprinkle it on top. And I'm gonna give a little stir and get them introduced in. Lovely. So our lid, which is over here, now goes on top loosely. And this now goes into my warm cupboard at 18 to 22 degrees C for the next week. And I'm gonna pop on the thermometer on top like that so I can keep track of the temperature and make sure it's running at the right temperature. Hey guys, for you it's just been a couple of seconds. For me, I've had to wait two weeks to get here. Now, following our instructions, and there's a lovely little chart, come on in a second, James, that it says, as long as it's below a point uh, 0.996, we're good to move on. So, I've taken a sample in our trial jar just here, and it's actually coming out at point 0.994, so we're good to move on. So the next stage, what we need to do is we need to siphon our wine, which is looking absolutely fantastic, into something that's called a carboy. And basically, this is a very large demijohn. And here I'm using a plastic one. Uh, we've got them in glass as well. Uh, but for me, plastic's a lot, lot lighter. What we've also got here is our siphon. So I've got our sterilized carboy, and I've got my sterilized siphon. Might have to get the ends around the right way. And then it goes. Quick suck, and off it goes. Now, we're not trying to get any air into this, so make sure you run your wine down the side. And as always, if you don't want to do the sucking, then we've got auto siphons where you just simply pop your tube in down in there and you pump it pump and it starts it going for you. So this is gonna take a couple of moments. So whilst this is taking its time, make sure you've got some to uh, keep you occupied. Uh, so the next thing we need to do here is we need to take our sachet of sorbate and sulfite. And this is a mixture of two different chemicals, potassium sorbate. And potassium sorbate is a, um, also been, you see it around called stabilizer. Uh, sometimes you'll see it in our shop, in our brewbit shop called fermentation stopper. And basically what this is, is going to kill all the yeast. And then the other thing you're going to see there is called uh, sulfate. And the sulfate is either potassium sulfate or sodium metabisulfate. Um, and those guys um, will basically deoxygenate and make sure that our wine stays this lovely colour. So what we need to do now, now we've got that in, is we need to give this a really good stirring. It's actually quite difficult to do because our carboy's only got a thin neck, so there's various ways you can do it. 
One of the ways you can do it is by taking a sterilized spoon and your handle and giving it a good stir, swapping directions every 30 seconds. Or you can use something called, back to me James, or you can use something called a uh, whiz stick or a degasser. And basically this fits onto your drill and this goes down in and you put it on a slow speed and it whips the wine up. So why are we doing this? Well, the fermentation during where the yeast were eating the sugar, as you notice, there were bubbles coming off um, and those bubbles of carbon dioxide. And some of that carbon dioxide disappears out into the atmosphere. Some of it though gets stuck in the wine. And so that we can move on and clear the wine efficiently, we need to knock that carbon dioxide out. So once you've got a good technique, you can really get going. It might not look like much, that long thin stick, but it really does a good job once you get going. And as you can see, all the foam that's coming off, this was carbon dioxide that was dissolved in our wine that's gradually being knocked out. Think of taking a can of Coke and opening the can of Coke and then shaking it to try and get some of the gas out so that you don't burp so much. Anyway, let's keep going, it's a good workout. So what you're not trying to do is you're not trying to whip air into it. And this is something that a degassing stick can accidentally do if you try and do it too fast, which is why I like to use my spoon. Getting air into it will introduce bacteria and some of those bacteria in the air could potentially turn this lovely alcohol to vinegar. Brilliant if you want five gallons of white wine vinegar, I'm sure you prefer white wine though. Now we're fully degassed, comes the Kisol sole, and this is this, this um, almost pearlescent uh, little sachet. And all we need to do is cut the corner off. Wee. That squirted in there, didn't it? Get it all in. And then we need to give this a stir. You give it a bit of a vigorous stir, why not? So what's key cell sole? Well, key cell sole is part of the finings process. And there's a, the liquid in here, all the particles in here are negatively charged. And all the sediment in our wine is positively charged. So uh, they're gonna start attracting each other. So what we need to do is we need to give this a really good stir to get the key cell sole working in. Once it's all stirred in, we need to pop in our bung and our airlock. And in the bottom of our airlock is um, just some sterilizing solution that I've popped in the bottom two bubbles. And they go in there. Now we're gonna put it to one side. And we're gonna leave it for 24 hours. 24 hours later, after adding our Kisel salt, we're gonna take our airlock out and we're gonna add in our Chitto sound. And this is the big packet. And this is the other part of the findings. Again, like the Kisel sole, a lot of liquid in here that's all negatively charged. And these two liquids come together and they will grab all the sediment that's floating around in the wine. And it's gonna cause it to all stick together, all clump together and gradually settle to the bottom. So with my sterilized spoon, the handle that is, I'm gonna get it all nicely stirred up. Now we've stirred the chittasan in, we're gonna pop our airlock back in, and this now needs to go somewhere safe that you can leave it and not touch it for about three, three and a half, four weeks because that's potentially how long this clearing process is going to be so that we get an absolutely perfectly clear one. So choose your location wisely. It's been five days since we added our last sachet of findings to our wine. Look how clear it's become. But come on in James and have a quick look at this because on the inside of the carboy, there is lots and lots of sediment that's attached itself to the plastic on the inside. If you come down here, James, down to the bottom, you'll see down at the bottom, you'll see it even better where it concaves in and where it's actually gathered. 
Now what we need to do is to aid the process is we actually need to knock this off the inside of the card boy and basically get it down because when we start siphoning it, it'll end up in the siphon. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to give it a quick twist. And if you come on in now, James, you'll see it all swirling up at the bottom. But more importantly, on in here, can you see all the particles are going wobbly, 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 wobbly. If you haven't knocked them all off again, give them another twist. Again, what we need to do now is we need to put this back into our safe place where it's now not going to be disturbed for another few weeks. It's now been four weeks since we put our findings into our carboy of wine and look at this. Look how beautiful and clear it is. Look, you can see me through it perfectly. And that little twist we gave after five days, you can see there's nothing stuck on the inside now and it's all settled beautifully to the bottom. So it's been sat here for four weeks undisturbed. It's now ready to siphon it off. And to siphon it off, guys, here I've got a sterilized bucket. I've got one with a, a tap in the end and you'll find out why later. And here I'm gonna be using my sterilized simple siphon. So nice and easy. We're going to take our simple siphon and I've got my sediment trap at the bottom here. Remember this is the bit to hopefully prevent any sediment that might possibly be uh, disturbed up getting down in, getting into, uh, into our bucket. So we're going to lower it just below the surface. So James, you can see we're only just below the surface and on this end I've given a good suck to get it going and we're going to siphon it in. Now back up here, James, back up to the carboy, because we're going to take the siphon down with the wine as we gradually work from the top as it gradually sinks. It's taken a little bit of time to get our wine from our carboy to our bucket, and you're always going to have a little bit left in the bottom so that you don't get any sediment. So that goes off and we don't need that anymore. Now, I know there will be some people out there that will have seen me use the simple siphon to move it from the carboy. Now, there will be people out there again that will comment on that I put it into my mouth and that why would I go up through all the process of sanitizing all my equipment only just to put my lips around the end of the tube. Well, the good thing is there's a load of alcohol in here and the alcohol will actually uh, kill off any bacteria and bugs that would be on my lips, so there's no problem with that. However, if you do want to be a bit more sanitary about it, you can use one of these, and this is an auto siphon, and basically you pop that into your carboy, you pump it a couple of times, and it starts to flow through. Anyway, if you want one of those, those are available on the website, but for now, we've got our wine in our bucket. So that means we're now ready to bottle. So I've rinsed and sterilized my bottles and on my bucket, you'll notice I've got a tap and this is a special tap because it fits this little bit of kit. And this is what we call a little bottler. And that fits on the bottom of my tap. And now I turn my tap on. Yes, I've turned the tap on. Because down at the bottom here is a fantastic little uh, valve. And the way this works is we take our bottle, we pop our valve down, and it starts filling up the wine bottle from the bottom. This really makes life a lot, lot easier. And the beauty is when we actually get the wine to the top up here, we lower the bottle, the flow stops, and because of the wand inside the bottle, it leaves us with the perfect amount of space for us to put our cork in in a minute. So, as you get closer and closer and closer to the top, you can control the flow because there's a little tap at the bottom. And when it gets to the top, you lower it down. And hey presto, there's your first bottle. Now we've bottled our wine, it's time to cork it. So here I've got a three handled corker available on our website. I've got a tea towel. And I'm just gonna lay the tea towel out in half just for us there. And in my pan here, I've got some corks. Now these are non-soak corks, but even though they're non-soak, what I like to do is to put them in a, pie, a pan of boiling water and allow them just to sit there for about a minute. And that helps soften them. So my cork's literally gonna go in. I'm gonna join that. 
and we'll take our first bottle. Ta-da! Easy as that. This is why I love this corker. It's so simple and easy. So again, in the water in there is a small amount of sodium metabisulfate as well, just to sterilize the corks. And I'm left-handed, which makes things a little bit more fun. Of course, this can be used either way around. And then just keep going. So you've popped all your corks in. Sometimes, every now and then, you'll find a cork which is really, really solid and just won't let you squeeze it into the corker, let alone into the bottle. So just put it to one side and move on to a new cork. It's not the end of the world, it's only a cork. One of the nice features of these slightly more expensive kits is that you get some extra little niceties. So here we've got a Vineco Sauvignon Blanc New Zealand label. And what I like to do with this as well is I like to just quickly put a note on there of the date uh, that I bottled it and also the um, ABV. And so, I'm just gonna neatly bottle up. Our wines. One of the finishing touches that I like to do with the more expensive wine kits are these little babies and this is a shrink cap. So what this does, as you've seen it I'm sure on lots of bottles of wine in the supermarket, is it makes a bottle of wine look really nice and posh. But it comes off easily. How are we going to get it? Well this is the beauty of it. Over here I've got a kettle. And I've also got a little tea towel. I take the top open ever so slightly so some steam can escape without the kettle switching itself off. And you'll notice that really quickly, just gently popping it in the steam and turning it round. Wipe it off. And now you know why it's called a shrink cap. Because it shrinks and it's on there properly is the Vanco New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. And as always with these, you might not get the full 30 bottles out, but sometimes you get left with a little bit extra for you to have a good old taster. Now, I know this is still really fresh and ideally we wanna lay this down for a little bit, um, a few months to, to give it time for its condition. But you can already get all those kind of gooseberry tones um, and you are really seeing that this is coming out at 13 and a half percent and you can smell that through it as well. It's got a really nice tingle on the tip of your tongue. Wow, that's actually got me salivating quite a lot. That's really made my mouth water. Right on the tip of the tongue, you've got all that lovely acid and then it flows over the tongue and kind of tingles on the top of your tongue, just like a New Zealand soap in your block should. And then you've got the kick of alcohol right at the back of the roof of your mouth, just like a proper New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc should. And then you've got all that real strong aromas of, of the, the, the gooseberries really punching through. So um, I know that I've done taste comparisons with um, conditioned bottles of these, and I know that a similar bottle in the supermarket is gonna push you over the 10 pound mark to get a 13.5% New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc that tastes this good. So comparing to that, this is going to come out at less than four pound a bottle. Okay, takes a little bit of time, you need a little bit of patience. And yeah, okay, a couple of extra little bits and bobs like the shrink caps makes this look a really, really professional bottle of wine. I would be quite happy giving that away to a friend. I think that's a really, really nice bottle of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. And I can tell you, I'm going to be happy drinking it. So, you'll find it on our website. Why don't you brew one up? Uh, there's loads of others in the Vineco Signature Series. So have a look on the website, brew one up for yourself, and why not put some comments down in the notes below and let us know how you got on. Anyway, for now, I'm gonna enjoy this. Happy brewing. <laughs>